Hi everyone. For those who don't know me, my name is Sandra Crooks and I'm a senior in the leadership program at Caprini. Um, for this video, I'm going to be discussing the signature assignment that we have for this ECG 300 class. Um, when I first got the assignment, you know, as I said before, I'm a teacher, so education is very important to me. So I really wanted to choose a topic that uh, I felt was important to discuss. Uh, so I was thinking, you know, especially in regards to urban education, all the problems that we've been discussing in class, um, you know, from overcrowding to inexperienced teachers to lack of funding, things like that. And, you know, I feel so often that we focus on these issues that are already present in our educational system, that we don't stop to think about the outside factors that could be affecting students in their um, educational career. So what I decided to uh, focus my signature assignment on is the effects of coming from a low SES home and how that can impact a student's performance. Uh, in doing my research, I discovered a couple things that I think are very significant um, in regards for educational preparation and motivation, um, things like that. Uh, so, to start off with mine, uh, the first topic that I plan to go over in my assignment um, is the idea of lack of finances within um, the child's family. You know, we spent time talking about how schools don't have adequate supplies such as technology, even updated textbooks, um, and then I thought, you know, what about the students that are going to school in their first day that don't even have a backpack or pencils or pen or notebook or a calculator? And, you know, it's not so much that they're unprepared, but more so the family can't afford to provide these supplies for their children. And I think if students aren't provided with the correct learning tools, it's going to be very difficult for them to keep up with the class. Uh, you know, if they don't even have a pencil or paper to write with, and how are they going to take notes? Um, and in addition to that, you know, we focused on students in urban environments performing below grade level. You know, well, coming from a family that has uh, the extra finances to spend, you know, most of the time parents will hire a tutor if their child is struggling specifically in math or English or whatever it may be. But for students coming from low SES homes, that extra money just simply isn't there. And, you know, in regards to urban education, we talked about the overcrowding and the student-teacher ratio. And as much as the teachers would like to spend that one-on-one -on -one time in order to get that child up to where they need to be, it just, they simply can't do it. Um, so I think both of those things, with being unprepared with school supplies and then not being able to receive the help that you need, in order to get to where you need to be could definitely hinder a child from performing their best in school. Um, another aspect I would like to discuss, uh, which has also been a pretty hot topic recently, is the idea of the working student. You know, some say, let kids be kids, so don't let them work. And others say, you know, it instills responsibility, provides them to have a good work ethic in the future. But, you know, when you look at students that are coming from impoverished homes, you know, some of these, even middle school and high school students, are having to work a lot of order, uh, a lot of hours in order to support their family. You know, it's not just the choice of getting your first job; it's a requirement. They need to do it. And you know, not only with working students that are working for money to support their family, um, you also have to take in consideration the students that are coming home from the bus and have to take care of their younger siblings because mom, dad, guardian, you know, has to work. And, you know, that's a job in itself. And whether they're working or providing for their their younger siblings, um, you know, that takes up a lot of their time. A lot of time that could be spent doing homework or spent studying, trying to, as I said before, you know, focusing on a subject they're not doing so well in. Uh, so I think that definitely can prevent them from having the best educational experience and getting the most out of um, school because, you know, they're so worried about everything else and they're just busy. There's no time in the day. 
you know, I know how difficult it is for me being a working college student, but I couldn't, you know, imagine being a high school student that has to work close to full time, you know, getting off the bus and having to go to work. So um, I definitely think that this is a challenge that students from poor families are facing. Um, the next one that I had briefly wanted to go over, just um, in one of the articles I had found, you know, it was discussing homework and the benefits of it. And as a teacher, I do believe that, you know, homework, although sometimes annoying, um, I think it's a really great tool to reiterate the lesson that had been taught for the day. And, you know, especially for those children that are struggling, you know, that gives them the extra practice. Whether or not they're, you know, getting the answers correct, at least they're making the effort. Um, but, you know, something that had come up in students from poor families is that, you know, some of them don't even have a home to go back to. Some of them are in shelters with their family until everything gets sorted out. And, you know, in addition to that, there's children that are going home to environments that are just not appropriate or, you know, workable for them to complete their homework. They don't have this space to be able to sit down and focus with everything going on. So, you know, not doing their homework is uh, definitely going to have a negative impact on um, their educational performance. Um, another thing that, you know, I think is very important is that, you know, students that are coming from basically nothing, that don't have money, don't have much of a home, you know, I think, you know, that can discourage a lot of them. You know, especially in regards, you know, thinking of the future with college, you know, a poor student might think to themselves, you know, my family can barely afford groceries. How am I going to afford to go to college? It's not in the cards for me, so, you know, what's the point for me to sit here in high school and, you know, try to learn what I can because, you know, there's no hope for the future. It's just not in the cards with my family situation. And I, and I think that, you know, view of the future for children that are coming from family with financial situations could definitely deter them from doing their best in school. So that's another important aspect I would like to go over. Um, another thing I know a lot of you had uh, posted about nutrition, which is something I also wanted to bring forward into it because I think, you know, that does play a role. Um, I sort of clustered it together with um, one of the paragraphs I'm going to explain in regards to uh, health issues for uh, lower income families. Um, I, in some of the research, you know, they fortunately they do have programs available for parents that, you know, cannot provide insurance for their child. Um, the Medicaid programs, uh, one of the most common ones now is CHIP, I believe. And... Uh, Unfortunately, what I discovered is, although it's great that they're offered this health care, in most cases, sometimes it's not the most, you know, adequate treatment that they're being provided. And sometimes it can be very difficult, you know, to find an appointment with a specialist or, you know, anything like that. Apparently, there's very, like, strict contingencies, you know, regarding who you can see and where you can go and things like that, which, you know, is not only a burden to the family, but the, the child itself who, you know, who wants to go anywhere if they don't feel well, and then not to mention the, you know, delayed treatment or inadequate treatment that they're being provided. Um, nutrition had come up in this as one of the problems for children coming from low SES homes because of, you know, the laundry list of issues it creates. You know, not only could it lead to childhood obesity, um, it also causes, you know, fatigue. It can weaken the immune system, you know, which just adds, you know, to this child. Um, as a lot of us know, healthier foods are, tend to be more expensive. You know, it's much easier for a parent to get ramen noodles at, what, 39 cents a bag, but that's not giving them the nutritional value they need as children. Um, you know, as far as even, you know, developmentally, you know, growth, getting the right nutrients, but, you know, giving them nutrients that um, allow them to feel well enough to perform the best that they can. Um, that was a big thing. And another thing I wanted to bring up uh, with the health issues, um, you know, we often focus on 
physical ailments in children, you know, whether they have a cold or pneumonia or whatever, whatever it may be, a stomach virus going around. Um, you know, there was a study that I read in my research that children that are coming from poorer homes tend to have much higher stress levels. And, you know, what they determined from this is that uh, mental health is as important as physical health in children. You know, whether they're depressed or they're stressed out about their situation, you know, if they're not being treated for that, that also adds to their performance and their involvement with school. You know, not only do I not feel well on the outside, but, you know, their insides are all mixed up too, which, you know, can make it very difficult for a child to even want to do anything. And if they're not getting the correct treatment, you know, they're not going to be able to perform well in school, let alone be there. You know, the absences they're going to have from, you know, having to take off because of their sickness or whatever it may be. Um, and the last thing that uh, I wanted to go over is, you know, in working class families, it's very difficult for parents to be avidly involved with their children's studies and, you know, school functions, things like that. Even, you know, parent-teacher conferences we have. And they can't take off work because they need the job to pay for their home, to pay for their food. And, you know, that also could, you know, prevent a learning disability being recognized as early as it should be. And a parent may also not recognize, you know, how significant their child's learning disability could be. You know, the lack of communication and the lack of involvement, you know, that also creates a problem. And it's not purposely or intentionally done. It's just simply, you know, the parents don't have time where they're not able to take off work to be, you know, present in their child's educational path. So um, these were the main issues that I felt, you know, definitely could deter um, a student from doing well. And, you know, I think it's explanation enough. Everything I went over uh, can be very stressful for students and prohibit them from, you know, going on to higher education or doing well in school. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually really glad that I chose this topic because, you know, I think it's important to recognize, you know, both, you know, the problems we have in our educational system in addition to, you know, the problems uh, specifically urban children are facing at home. You know, all the funding in the world at school isn't going to help a child who doesn't have the right health care or who still has to work. So I think, you know, for me, this was a good topic that I'm really excited about going over. Um, as for my conclusion, you know, it's kind of hard for me to come up with a solution because, you know, there's already the lack of funding for school. You know, there's not much that we can do to help these children, you know, I'm glad that we have the free lunch programs and after school, um, <clears throat> I like after school daycare programs for them, but it's, it's just simply not enough. So perhaps we could come up with a program that would provide every student with a notebook or a pencil, <coughs> excuse me, or something like that. Um, hopefully I'll find some more suggestions in my research, but as of now, that's what I've discovered for the signature assignment. Um, I hope you enjoyed my video and my explanation, and we'll have to see how it goes. Thank you.